Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is a continuation of Jezebel. Uh, we're going to go and take a look at the spiritual state of Northern Kingdom of Israel at the time. So turn to 1 Kings chapter 17. We're going to cover... Elijah and his dealings with a very sinful and evil people of Israel and their evil wicked king Ahab and his probably lovely evil black-hearted wife named Jezebel. Now, like I've mentioned, I have a hour and 40 minute study on the life of Elijah. One day he's going to return to confront the false prophet who will probably also call himself Elijah because everybody's expecting Elijah to return. He's going to be one of the two witnesses and uh, he's going to do the same type of things in the New Testament during the tribulation that he did in the Old Testament. You know, God has a game plan. And, uh, you know, game plan works. So, why change it? And Satan also has a game plan. But uh, his game plan only works for a time. You know, sometimes people think that... Uh, God was excessively cruel or that uh, the God of the Old Testament's not the God of the New Testament. Well, you got to realize something. Do you know that Satan tried to kill God? And he would have if he had the capability. I mean, seriously. I suspect that... Uh, the Lord that created the devil feigned weakness to make Satan think, oh, I'm going to kill this guy and take his place. And he would have done it if he'd had the power. But, uh, you know, that's how you know have you ever heard the expression of fair weather friend? Yeah. You know who your true friends are when you're down and out and you've got nobody. True friend will come through for you. Whereas, you know, when you uh, need something, well, <laughs> a lot of people will abandon you. Uh, I think there was a movie called, what was it, The Gift? Uh, it had James Garner in it. I think it was The Gift. A uh, rich guy was uh, had his family, and they were all wanting his money when he died. You know, he's like an oil tycoon or something. And he had a grandson that he really liked and had high hopes for. So he decided to teach him a lesson. And he cut off all his money out of the trust fund. He had somebody do this. Uh, that he trusted, a trusted uh, administrator. And uh, he very swiftly found out that uh, all his friends that he'd you know, given money to and what have you, when he needed a hand, they were nowhere to be found. His car got repossessed because, you know, they quit paying for it. He got kicked out of his uh condo or wherever he was living because wasn't getting paid for got evicted and he had no access to any of his money and his family was told that if any of you help this kid that your inheritance is gone you'll get nothing so obviously they were more concerned about the money than you know their kid said, nope, you can't stay here with me. So he's out in the park living 
out in the park, homeless. He found out real quick about who were his friends were, which was like nobody. And uh, let's see, what else? Oh, and his girlfriend. Yeah, when she found out that uh, he had no money, like their last date together. Well, he she didn't know it was the last date, but uh, he was dating her and then he tried to pay with his credit card or whatever and it was all cut off and uh, so just remember that uh, the revel uh, the time period foretold in Revelation the what they call the tribulation period the plagues of Revelation are going to mimic the plagues that the Lord put upon Pharaoh in the time of Egypt with Moses when the Lord wanted Israel to leave Egypt. And when you have drought, famine always follows. And then when you have a lack of food, well, disease or pestilence always follows. And when you have drought, well, you know that the Lord is displeased. Absolutely. And people can say, well, you know, harp, H-A-A-R-P. But uh, you got to realize the Lord's in control. And even if they're using harp for weather things, the Lord is allowing it. I mean, even Satan serves the purpose of the Lord. Hard to believe, but it's true. God could destroy Satan at any time he wants. But he is right now serving a purpose, just like uh, Pharaoh. Uh, you could read Exodus 9.16, and it says, Speaking of Pharaoh, And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, Pharaoh, I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. And the New Testament witness to that is Romans 9.17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And the revelation period of tribulation is going to separate the sheep from the goats and the wheat from the tares or the weeds. And then God's going to take the weeds and he's going to burn them. And the weeds get gathered first. But don't tell that to a pre-trib rapture believer because really you think about it, they believe Whatever the pastor says, they don't read their Bible, so they don't even they don't even know what the Bible says, except for supposedly what the pastor tells them. So, all right, so let's go to First Kings seventeen. We're gonna kind of blow through this because uh, it's leading up to Ahab and Jezebel. So, background story. Israel is evil, and a pastor that I respect once said that wicked leaders would be a reflection on the spiritual state of the people, and the Bible even says that, something along those lines. Here's a good one. This is coming to America and Europe and UK. Proverbs 28, 28. When the wicked rise, men hide themselves. But when they perish, the righteous increase. Ooh. Here's another one. Proverbs 16, 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself. All things. That includes Satan, right? For the Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, 
even the wicked for the day of evil. Even the wicked for the day of evil. All right, it took me a while to find it, but Proverbs 29 and verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Well, that's where we are today. So, and that's where Elijah was in the days of Ahab and Jezebel. The people were evil, and God sent evil rulers. Read the book of Judges sometime. Uh, people were evil. God sent oppressors and people to uh, persecute them. They repented of their evil. They turned from the evil to righteousness. God got rid of the oppressor. God blessed them. They got all fat and happy. And then they turned their back and forgot the Lord. That seems to be how it is. You know, people just don't understand. Persecution is going to bring out the remnant church and make it strong. You know, they tried that in the days of the apostles. They tried persecution. It made the church strong. It was when they quit persecuting the church and they infiltrated it to destroy it from within. That's when problems started happening. You know, if you went to John Hagee's church, uh, not you, but let's say there was a dozen people with guns and they took the church over and covered all the exits and says, you know, I hate, I hate you Christians. I'm going to kill every single one of you. But if you deny Jesus and spit on the Bible, I'll let you walk out that door. I'll let all of you go free. I wonder if there'd be 10 people in John Hagee's church that would uh, not do that to save their lives. Seriously, I wonder. And Jesus said, if you deny me before men, that he would deny you before the Father and his angels. I'm paraphrasing. That's the Bob paraphrased version. It's still better than the NIV. All right, so let's go to 1 Kings 17. We're going to kind of breeze through this. Seventeen, verse one. Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, "As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word." And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, "Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan." And yeah, I know I did this study not too long ago, but it's part of the series. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pa pass after a while, that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Now, this is, I just noticed this. God commanded the widow woman. To sustain him. Did she see an angel? Did she have a dream? I don't know. But the Lord says he commanded a widow woman to, there to sustain Elijah. Verse 10. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel, 
that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but an handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Yeah, we're going to eat the last of the food, and then we're going to die of starvation. That's the Bob commentary. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruse of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. So that barrel of meal and her cruise of oil, not going to run out. And I think it's seven years here. You know? Can you imagine that? And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days. Well, guess what? Jesus took a couple of small fishes and a couple of loaves of bread and fed 5,000, right? Couldn't uh, the Lord do the same thing in the days of Elijah? Oh, yeah. So, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Quit breathing. What happens when you quit breathing? You're dead, right? And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance, and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode. And he laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil, evil upon the widow of whom I sojourn by slaying her son? Oh, and he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. So here is the kid's dead, and the soul is gone from the child. Huh. You know, in the Old Testament, uh, all the souls of everybody that died went to uh, the grave. The righteous went to Abraham's bosom. And the wicked went into the lake, well, a uh, place of fire. But then after Christ, they go to under the altar. So when people tell you that there was, you know, soul sleep, uh, no. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that. I should say Jehovah's Witless because they don't have any wits. Uh, Revelation 6 and verse 8. And I looked to behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Do you know that 25% or one quarter of the earth is going to die from war, famine, disease, and beasts of the earth. I don't know if they're four-legged or two-legged, but, you know, verse 9, here's the punchline. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar, under the altar, the altar of God now, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God 
and for their testimony which they held. And they cried. Who cried? The souls that were slain for the word of God that are under the altar. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not adjudge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So here it is, this kid's soul is gone. And Elijah's asking, well, let's go back to 1 Kings 17, 22. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. Oh, let's go back to verse 20. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. See, there was a resurrection in the Old Testament. Think about it. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in, in thy mouth is true. Well, no kidding, lady. You know, I mean, here's you got a little bit of oil and a little bit of meal. To make a little flour, you know, wheat flour. And it doesn't run out for years. I mean, you know. Yeah. You know, and Jesus was doing all the miracles of the Old Testament prophets. All of them. All of them. And still, many people would not believe. Because they believe the religious crowd, you know. Oh, I went to, I went to um, Pharisee University, and I got my doctorate degree. And uh, you know, this Jesus guy. I mean, he's just a carpenter's son. What does he know? I mean, I'm Doctor Reverend Holy Roller, you know, uh, Pharisee. So, yeah. All right, so that is the end of 1 Kings chapter 17. We're going to continue in verse uh, chapter 18. I'm sorry, 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 17.